Welcome to The Boiling Point. Before we get started, make sure you like and you share and also go out there and subscribe. Make sure you hit the little bell so that any videos that come up, you will be notified and see the latest stuff that we have on Weekly Boiler Tips, uh, Steam Culture, as well as The Boiling Point. Today, we're gonna to be talking about oil on burners and actually how they actually uh, burn today on The Boiling Point. Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. I am Richie Ware and this is Steve Taylor, a familiar face that uh, runs our rental division. Um, Stephen, we're inside one of the units that most of our units are all gas in number two. Um, most burners are gas today. Um, I got gas, I don't know about you, but I got, I got, I got gas. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> um, but number two is the, the other fuel. Yeah. And um, what I want to talk about a little bit about is how we actually uh, uh, have these units burn number two and how they're set up and how it actually works. So why don't you walk us through that? Okay. Smaller units will have a fuel oil tank with them. These big units, we don't have the room, obviously, mm -hmm. and they're overweight to begin with, so we don't put tanks on them, so we'll have to put exterior tanks. We'll talk about that some. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> this is the, the oil pump setup, so suction side is coming through the floor. We've got a strainer in all of them. You want to protect the pump and protect the system, mm -hmm. um, and, and that, that's a, a, a mesh strainer, so you can just pull the cage out of it and dump it out and clean it. They really have to be careful with that. Um, on the front end of the job, it's really important because you're, you're running new piping. Somebody drug the piping through the gravel. They, they've got uh, metal shavings in there from when they cut and threaded the pipe. So right. you'll typically have issues with that on the front end. The, the startup tech will know that. First thing he'll do is run the pump for a while, stop it, open the strainer up, dump it out, clean it up, do that two or three times to get all the stuff out of the piping. So just gotcha. have to watch that. Is there stuff just in the oil itself if there wasn't any type of uh, gravel? Typically not, okay. but if, let's say they're, they pulled a tank out of the, out of the rear of the, of the building somewhere, rear of the lot, and right. brought it up, and they stirred that tank up and it had yep. sludge in it, that's gonna be that's caught in there, so that's, so that's gonna be more issues they have to deal with. Okay. And, and the, the quickest way for them to tell is, uh, you know, when they when they start the unit up, they'll record the suction uh, that we we're pulling here on that pump because we're having to suck that oil into here. Yep. So they'll record that, you know, two inches, three inches, something like that. If that starts going into three and four inch range when you were running to, you know, you have a restriction. Okay. Uh, and and that could, the first thing to do is check the strainer. The other thing this time of year to really be careful of if you're up north and you get real cold temperature and you have an outdoor tank, that oil will gel if it gets okay. down to zero, 10 below, five right, below, right. it's gonna to start to gel. So if they haven't put an additive in there for it, then it's gonna start, the oil will just get thick and the, and the pump can't pump it. Right. So you'll start having misfires, then you check your, your suction pressure and it's real high, or suction on it's real high, pulling a high vacuum, you know, you, you've gotta put some additive in there or heat the tank or do something. So it doesn't just have to be an additive, you could actually heat the you tank You can actually as well. heat the tank, yeah. yeah. Okay. A lot of them put a blanket around it and heat right, it. Right, right. Okay. These particular limbs field will run a real high uh, pressure, so we're running 300 plus on the discharge, okay. so everything's gotta be high pressure going through. Uh, and then what happens, the way the nozzle's designed, we take that high pressure oil and goes through that nozzle, and it comes out and it puts it into a mist. It's, on, it's not quite a gas, but it's a real fine mist, so that when the pilot's on and that mist comes on, it lights immediately and you don't blurp out oil. Yeah, you're just not running. Yeah. oil out into yeah. the moisture just, tube. It's, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's not spitting it out there. If it start, right. That's when you when you start having issues. If something goes past the strainer, a real fine stuff, it'll get clogged the nozzles up and you'll look in there and you'll see it spitting. Yeah. You know, you got problems with it. So you've got um, uh, pressure, of course, that creates that, mm -hmm. um, but there's also air. Air yeah. atomizing. And, and um, you know, a lot of them are air atomizing. All of our water tubes are air to start, mm -hmm. but then they turn over to steam because it takes so much air, it just doesn't, it's not feasible to have a big air compressor set in there. So they'll, yeah. they'll start them on, on, on air, and then as soon as they get steam up, they'll switch them over to steam off the boiler itself and steam atomizing, it does a really, really good job. But then you've got, you know, if you're air atomizing, your pressure is gonna be running 25 or 30 pounds instead of 300 pounds. Okay. So it's completely different pressures and it's all burner and, um, you know, design specific. It's not, 
any one burner. You know, the limb field's all gonna be high pressure. Um, the, the power flames, some of them are pressure atomizing, some of them are steam or air atomizing. So mm -hmm. it's, you just, it's all burn up uh, specific. Okay, so then once the oil goes from here, then it obviously goes into some valves. Um, yep, Go, goes into those, these um, shut off valves and there's, there's a bypass there. So the pump, it, it's gonna be moving, you know, it's a, it's a positive displacement pump. So it's gonna move oil, it's going somewhere. Okay. So when it start, starts up, the valves are shut off. So we have a recirc comes off of that goes ah. back to their fuel oil tank. Gotcha. And so it's running oil all the time. Okay. And then when, when the, those valves come on, the recirc shuts down, the valves open up to force the oil through the nozzle and not have as so much return going back to the pump <clears throat> tank. Are there some safety things in place just like on gas? Same thing, same thing. We've got, this is a, a low oil pressure switch. Mm -hmm. So if the pressure drops down, meaning you're not putting enough oil, it gets down below where you set it for that burner, it just shuts the burner down. It's a safety precaution. Okay. Then you have proof of closure switches on the on the oil valve, same thing. Right. They've got to be proved closed before the burner will allow itself to light to make sure you're not shoving oil through there and filling the furnace up with oil and then light it off and okay. everybody's disappointed. A little bit about the actual flame itself. Um, what is the difference between a gas flame and a, a number the, two flame? The oil flame's completely different. Gas is, is really, uh, a lot of times it's translucent. You mm -hmm. can see right through it. Mm -hmm. uh, the oil flame is not. It's it's a it's going to be a quite a bit darker flame. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just has a completely different look to it. On low fire, a lot of times that flame instead of coming out there and looking great, it's just rolling back at you, just a rolling yeah. ball in there. Once yeah. you start coming up, then you'll have independent fingers on that oil nozzle. So it's a whole different looking flame than gas. Okay. Now, gas and oil when they're actually um, uh, need to, to come on. Do you really need to decide I'm going to burn oil or I'm going to burn gas or can you actually switch on the fly? If you have designed the control system, you can switch on the fly. None of our rental units are set up that way. Okay. It, it's, it's a whole lot more technology and most of the customers are not set up to be able to handle that kind of technology. So we don't want them switching on the fly, uh -huh. but we, we, we can do that. We can switch them on the fly. Typically you do not. The only time you really do that is when, let's say it's a chemical plant and they're doing a, a product that if they lose that product or lose steam to that product, within minutes, they've destroyed everything. You know, if it gets too cool, it explodes, mm -hmm. it gets too, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Right. So they can't lose steam to it ever. Right. So if something happens and their gas is shut off for some reason, they've got to be able to keep that boiler going. They can't afford to be down at all. So it automatically switches over and starts on, fires on oil and just keeps right on going. So if you're burning gas on this and then all of a sudden somebody said, hey, I, I need to, to, to do number two, they've got everything in place, what actually has to happen? They, they shut the unit down, they, there's a gas oil changeover switch on the control panel, mm -hmm. flip it over to uh, oil. Typically uh, there's a, if the gas is going to be complete, cut, shut completely off, the pilot on this thing is either gas or propane. So they, you have to pay attention to that because they shut all the gas off, you can't light it on oil, you have no, no gas for the pilot. So then they have to hook a propane tank to the outside of the unit and there's a three-way gas valve we put in our pilot lines for propane or natural gas so they can run it on, on propane and, and then they'll, they'll hit the burner switch and away she'll go. Awesome. Do you have um, the same type of uh, sooting and things like that in the boiler with gas and number two? Typically not. If you if you sewed a boiler up on natural gas, you really screwed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really didn't know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. it, it on oil, it, it can happen a whole lot easier just from you know a strainer stopping up and it's starting to spit a little bit. Yeah. Or when they first started up, they they had too much oil, not enough air. They can soot them up a little bit. If it's heavy soot. They've done it for a long time. Okay. Awesome. Great information. I think everybody's going to enjoy this, and we will see you next time on Boiling Point.